he saw that, okay, I have the passion about teaching, so he introduced me to the associate chair for undergraduate and said, say, it is capable to teach that course so during my yeah. sabbatical. So it's like it was a quick interview, like yeah. a capability and something like that. So that was, but it was like really something very important for us to teach. Yeah. Us. Actually, before I um, teach this course, um, I was teaching uh, new software because at the time, you know, LabVIEW, so I was teaching LabVIEW to the research group, and he was present. He could, you could see how oh, I yeah. teach okay, that's, that's that the little things. workshop. It was not full teaching, but, but the workshop, the style you know, how, they, how, we are delivering. how I'm teaching a new material, and he didn't know, and he learned, you know. Okay. So he saw me before, you know. The I, way of your yeah. delivering. So, and he, he, he always trusted, you know, me. Yes, in, this is the thing. In both research and teaching, so. Yeah, especially, yeah. Yeah. You moved to... Or, at that time, Ryerson, now it's TMU. Toronto Metropolitan University or TMU. And now you started your journey with the research. Yes. So if you can give us like a broader aspects about what are the area of research that is you are really working. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, um, you know, I, I believe at the interest again. So I've been always uh, passionate about uh, the environmental, you know, um, research areas. So I started in, because, you know, when you do research, it's not finished. And we just, even today, you know, after all this research in water, wastewater. So I feel that, you know, this is just the beginning. There are, as you solve one problem, more problem, you know, arises. So, and um, so I've been focusing all in environment, different aspects, and some multidisciplinary, actually, projects. But mainly my focus was on the combination of advanced oxidation technologies and biological processes. Okay. So uh, this, is the, this has been the main topic that I always focus okay. um, you know, on my research. But of course, uh, if I break it down, so I have done... Um, on the advanced oxidation technologies, different aspects, for example, photocatalysis or UV hydrogen peroxide or combination, and I've done biological, and then I like to make them combined or integrated. Why? Because advanced oxidation technologies, as we know, um, they are expensive processes, which are based on hydroxyl radical. Maybe production. we know, but maybe the audience don't know. So if you can explain a little bit about the concept of advanced oxidation technologies, how they are working. So photocatalysis are based on UV um, mainly. And then I'm not going to go too much through the details of technical. Maybe it's, uh, but in general, it's based on UV. So when UV emits on a semiconductor, uh, such as uh, titanium dioxide or any other um, semiconductor can activate it and the reaction takes place on the surface and what happens, they generate hydroxyl radicals. These hydroxyl radicals are very strong. Strong um, oxidants. Oxidant that can attack any organic. So no matter how tough Breaking the organic down. or non-biodegradable is, it breaks and rips it off all the way. Except a little bit of problem with, uh, you know, those carboxylic acids. Otherwise, it's, it's good for all organic compounds. Now, hydroxyl radicals, we can generate in other methods, like by ozone, for example, or UV hydrogen peroxide. So when UV emits on hydrogen peroxide, can rip it off to two hydroxyl radicals and many other advanced oxidation. But the main, these are also the reaction time for advanced oxidation are very short. We're talking about minutes. We're talking about uh, maximum hours. Whereas biological processes are very slow processes. If especially, you know, the concentration is too high, you know, it could be toxic to microorganisms or the reaction rate could take yeah. days, months, years even. So biological not working for all compounds. But Advanced oxidation processes, unfortunately, are very expensive because there are a lot of operational costs involved. And um, biological processes are very cheap, but they are slow. So I would like to combine these two. So to pre-treat them a little bit by advanced oxidation, then send them to biological, which is now biodegradable and also cheap processes. Can we combine this and then make it feasible for either a small scale or large scale processes. 
So, so this is the focus of my own research so far. So the integration of the advanced oxidation technologies was the biological uh, processes. This yes. is the core of yep. what you... By optimization, how long... So the question is, how long can we treat them or pre-treat them? Okay. Because we don't, we don't need to pre-treat them all the way. As far as we pre-treat them, very short uh, period of time to make them biodegradable, that would be sufficient to send it to the biological process, you know. Um, but there are a lot of challenges in this. And Can I you give done... us an example of, um, I would say, a successful case or a case study that is does a challenging but combining or integrating yes. those type of those two. I've versus... had, I have a lot of examples that has been working very well. So one of the um, um, good examples that I can give you. Because I moved to, you know, actual wastewater rather than synthetic uh, lab prepared um, wastewater. So we did it with actual slaughterhouse wastewater, for example. Okay. So in a slaughterhouse wastewater, for example, we started with advanced oxidation. It didn't work, but we started with anaerobic, then aerobic, then advanced oxidation to polish them. So disintegration, but the other way around, because you can put... Advanced oxidation, either as pretreatment or post-treatment. Okay. So that was one successful that it worked. Another um, successful story we can say was uh, in actually uh, other wastewaters. Uh, well, we didn't do actual for this, but we started with, let's say, pharmaceutical components, and it's been working very well. And for polymeric uh, soluble polymeric compounds like uh, uh, PVA, you know, it worked well. So we have a lot of examples, but we used it as either pretreatment or, or post-treatment. Post yes. So this was one aspect. Also, we focus on the photochemical reactors, how we can improve them, because also there are a lot of challenges. Yeah. Like photocatalysis, honestly, is not working. It's a simple process. It's cheap. We can use even sunlight. But the main problem is the efficiency is very low because titanium dioxide is not sufficient. We did a lot of research to improve the catalyst by doping with transition metals like silver. And we improved it. But it's still, you know, the efficiency is not as much as expected. And there are a lot of challenges in photoreactor engineering. That's why we are writing this manuscript to list oh, the challenges. So, yes. Yeah, why, it's not, why it's not been working. Yeah, so, but there is a potential for that. There's a There's potential. Interest. Don't get me wrong. Yes. It's been working in the lab. Okay. Perfect. We get results. But does it work so how is the mechanism? Scale? How, how, how they are helping the photochemical reaction? So now we move to UV hydrogen peroxide. Well, a lot of research not to move. You know, we have done a lot of UV hydrogen peroxide. And um, even UV itself, it's good for disinfection um, of microorganisms. We did the project that it's very efficient, is very fast. So, um, but UV hydrogen peroxide, I think, I still believe, is one of the pretreatment we should use uh, because it's simple. The only oxidant we use is hydrogen peroxide, which is not that expensive. Yep. But if we come up with some controlling uh, the hydrogen peroxide, the problem is right now, I, well, few graduate PhD students finished this project and we are not done yet. No. Because the challenge is hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Because hydrogen peroxide, when you send it to biological, cannot exceed 5 milligram per liter. If the concentration is more, it's going to be toxic, toxic. to microorganisms. So can we put some control in how much we have to put that does not exceed 5 milligram per liter? If you put lower that amount that it's needed, the process might not be efficient. If you put a high, you have a residual. So right now, even I have a PhD student working in, and we have actually doing the online measurement of hydrogen peroxide, integrating what some developing some advanced controller mm. to control. But the job is not done yet, and there's still lots of room to improve, to improve to work the, the work. And already, I can tell you. Um, Two, the few projects finished, you know, they graduated PhD and master's student. Right now, there's a PhD student working on this area. 
And still, you know, it's, it's a big challenge. So, because it's a new area, so until, well, some areas, they already started to implement it in large, you know, in, in, in real world, but still there are a lot of room to improve it. I, I, I can imagine, especially when you mentioned that sometimes the, the concept works in the lab with a synthetic waste, yeah. but when you go with a more complex material, or real, like the real waste, actual waste now yeah. the complexity of the material, Absolutely. the solids and other stuff. Yeah, and also the background of the wastewater. For example, if you have carbonate by carbonate, you know, or uh, some chloride compounds, you know, it's going to scavenge the hydroxyl radicals. So you have to really deal with all this. So how about if you have other components that are not predictable? Yes. What you're going to have tomorrow, right? So especially municipal wastewater, as we know, yeah. day by day, it becomes more complex with emerging contaminants. So this is another challenge that, you know, it's, it's an interest for me so that we look at. So this is one of the projects that I've been doing. Also, I've participated in a little bit with the project with climate change. Uh -huh. That is interesting that I got a couple of um, grants from Queen Elizabeth. So, and um, this problem goes back to um, initially with the North the um, north of Colombia, for example, right? The Caribbean Sea. What happens because they have a lot of flooding. Okay. So when you have flooding, the sea level rises. And then when the sea level rises, the salty water starts to uh, diffuse through the um, groundwater. And because the main source of water for them are the aquifers, which are fresh water. And then by sampling, they uh, we found that, you know, um, well, they did a lot of the sampling that, the aquifers are contaminated with salty water, so it affected a lot. So this was a project to do some modeling, and then we had some successful, um, I mean, modeling part prediction, you know, and all this for uh, salinity intrusion. It's called salinity intrusion. So that was another project that um, I, I got interested for the first time, <laughs> and I did. Okay. And uh, other than that, so I had uh, even once I did uh, an master student who worked in um, a steel company here in Bellington and they got a problem of impurities you know when you do the bridges in and then the the uh, metal you know they have crack whatever so one of the sources of these cracks is the impurity in a steel okay yeah. so such as metal oxide something like that different like zinc or whatever you know and then they wanted to find a way to remove these impurities in the ladle, you know, and the uh, production of steel when it's in the uh, molten state. So we did a project and then we came up with something uh, new and then we provided to them. And um, so that was a but project. But that test was at a lab level, yes? Yes, or we did it in the lab level. Lab level. Yeah. So because, But you because know, of funding, I'm... we didn't really, and I didn't continue, <laughs> so... No, but in general, um, you you know that, and everybody's aware that is doing something in the lab is something, and doing it at a full scale is something of course, else. Yeah, of course. So, let's say, what is the difference if you can tell the audience what is the difference between a small well, scale in the lab scale because everything is controlled. A large scale. In lab scales, everything is controlled. You know, because first of all, uh, you know, you can steer it well. There's not really we don't have any problem of mixing mass transfer. Because mixing is easy in a beaker or even in pilot scale. But when you go to large scale, when you have a big reactor, how you can, you know, these are all problems. Mass trans is a problem. Um, to have a, a proper reaction is a problem. And also the background of waste, well, let's say in wastewater area, is different. You don't know what contaminants today, what pH you have tomorrow, what pH you have, or what fluoride you have. Because sometimes um, in municipalities, you know, we have, let's say, a heavy rain or flooding, so it's it's going to disturb. And another problem project that I uh, got interested and we worked on, and we I made a, we made a pattern with with the with one of my graduate students who finished, was the treatment of actual winery wastewater. Mm -hmm. And what happens was that the winery um, they haul it into municipal wastewater. And when you haul uh, winery wastewater into, uh, or any other 
high organic load um, wastewater to the municipal wastewater, you, begin shock, you give a big shock to the system. No matter if it's in the liquid train or the solid train, so it's going to disturb the problem. So we had a collaboration with the uh, municipalities in Niagara region. So they were complaining about, you know, this problem. So one of my uh, graduate students who finished um, his, her PhD studies with me. Um, so now Dr. Melody Johnson and we did a patent together. So we developed a method that we solved this problem. Okay. If you do a little bit of pretreatment using only biological, so we can, with patent that is available, you know, uh, we can solve that problem. So there should be no bore. So you get the brewery wastewater, you did a pretreatment, like preparing it. Yeah. First, and we need a injure. very simple stage. They can okay. have, and we have tried it. So it's been working. So the, you can, so uh, smoothly, you can introduce it to the process without having any shock. Mm -hmm.